Tonight, the unthinkable is happening off California. New land is rising overnight from the ocean floor, while entire neighborhoods are collapsing into the sea. And the seafloor is rising off California, and scientists are baffled. Over 130 homes have already been lost, and what's truly alarming is nobody expected a simple 1956 road project to unleash this geological chain reaction. Could it get even worse? To understand how human ambition triggered a natural disaster where sinking land creates uplift, we have to start at the very moment physics turned upside down. Gravity, as most people know it, is supposed to pull everything down. But off the coast of California, something strange is happening. Instead of sinking, the seafloor is pushing upward as if the laws of physics have been quietly rewritten beneath the waves. The puzzle begins with a vast slab of land perched on a hidden ramp deep below Rancho Palos Verdes. Instead of sitting flat, this ancient layer of shale dips gently toward the ocean, forming a natural incline that runs for hundreds of meters. Picture a massive block sliding slowly down a tilted ramp. It's not just moving forward, it's also being forced upward, like a lever prying open a stubborn lid. Each inch of horizontal slip translates into a fraction of vertical lift, all because of the geometry of the ramp beneath. The math behind it is surprisingly simple. The steeper the angle, the more upward force is generated for every bit of sideways movement. For the Portuguese bend slide, the ramp can tilt anywhere from 6 to 22 degrees. Even at the gentlest slope, the result is a subtle but unstoppable push that lifts the sea floor. This isn't a one-off event. The process unfolds every time rainwater seeps into the fractured earth, reducing friction along the slippery clay layer at the base. The landmass lurches forward, and the ramp beneath it acts like a giant crowbar, converting that motion into uplift. The effect is magnified where the ramp thickens or the angle steepens, creating hot spots where the ocean floor rises faster than anyone thought possible. Geologists call this the geological lever effect. It's a mechanical paradox. As land onshore collapses, the seabed offshore rises. The two movements are locked together, each feeding off the other. This coupling defies the intuition that what goes down must stay down. Instead, the Earth's own architecture turns collapse into creation, trading the loss of homes and roads for new land forming beneath the waves. The evidence is not just theoretical. Satellite radar and GPS measurements track the movement in real time, showing the ground surging forward and the seafloor bulging upward in response. Computer models and laboratory experiments confirm the same principle. When a massive slab of earth slides down an inclined plane, the ramp slope determines how much of that motion becomes vertical lift. The process is efficient, relentless, and entirely governed by the physics of the underground ramp. This is the paradox at the heart of California's rising sea floor, a natural lever powered by gravity, geometry, and the hidden weakness of the rocks below. The land that falls away above is, quite literally, raising the ocean floor below. It's a mechanical puzzle that has left even the experts searching for answers, and it all began with a silent shift deep beneath the hills of Rancho Palos Verdes. In 1956, bulldozers rolled onto the quiet hillsides above Portuguese Bend, launching the Crenshaw Boulevard extension. What began as a routine infrastructure project would soon become a textbook case of unintended consequences. County engineers ordered the excavation of more than a million cubic yards of earth, slicing through ancient dormant landslide deposits that had rested undisturbed for thousands of years. The plan called for cutting into the hillside, rerouting drainage, and laying a new ribbon of asphalt to connect the growing suburbs. But beneath the surface, the ground was anything but stable. Construction crews encountered layers of bentonite-rich clay, a material notorious for its slipperiness when wet. Soil tests from the time revealed a friction angle of just 6 degrees, slicker than a wheelchair ramp. Despite warnings in county meeting minutes and the cautious voices of local geologists, the project pressed ahead. 
Drainage patterns were altered as culverts and channels redirected water runoff, funneling it into the very earth that had once held steady. The removal of stabilizing weight at the top of the slope, combined with the influx of water, set the stage for disaster. Within months of the road's completion, cracks began to snake across the pavement. Freshly graded slopes slumped and buckled. By the end of 1956, the ground was moving. The dormant landslide, estimated to have been still for at least 5,000 years, was now awake and hungry. Aerial photographs from the late 1950s show a patchwork of shifting earth and collapsing homes, each new slide tracing the path of the newly built road. The destruction moved fast. Over 130 houses were condemned or destroyed within just 18 months. Insurance claim records from the period document a relentless sequence of losses, whole streets rendered uninhabitable, families forced to evacuate as their foundations twisted and walls split apart. Local headlines captured the chaos, neighborhood slips into sea, 35 homes gone, while city council minutes declared disaster zones and authorized emergency closures. Residents watched as lawns buckled, utility lines snapped, and roads vanished into the earth. Each week brought new damage, the pace of destruction matching the slow, unstoppable creep of the hillside itself. Geotechnical reports commissioned in the aftermath left little doubt about the cause. The removal of stabilizing earth and the redirection of water by the Crenshaw Boulevard project had reawakened a prehistoric landslide, one that no amount of modern engineering could put back to sleep. Today, scientists and city planners cite Portuguese Bend as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder that even the best intentions can unleash forces far beyond human control. Beneath the surface of Rancho Palos Verdes, a thin layer of bentonite clay holds the key to the hillside's uncanny mobility. This clay, formed from ancient volcanic ash, has a unique property. When it gets wet, its friction drops to almost nothing. Laboratory tests show a friction angle of about 6 degrees, less resistance than a wheelchair ramp. On a dry day, the clay acts like a weak glue holding the overlying rock in place. But after a heavy rain, water seeps down, saturating the bentonite and turning it into a natural lubricant. The result is a surface so slick that even gentle slopes can't hold back the mass above. Geotechnical specialists have measured these properties using core samples pulled from deep within the landslide zone. In controlled experiments, they found that a block of earth perched on a six-degree slope of wet bentonite will start to move under its own weight, no extra force required. The clay's microscopic structure, tiny flat mineral sheets stacked together, traps water between layers, swelling and weakening the bonds that would normally keep the hillside stable. As pore pressure builds, the effective stress drops, and the entire hillside is free to glide. This slippery truth explains why the land above seems to defy gravity. The bentonite slip layer acts as a geological conveyor belt, set in motion by nothing more than rainfall and the relentless pull of gravity. It's not just the angle of the ramp that matters, but the chemistry and physics of the clay itself an invisible hazard that turns solid ground into a moving platform whenever the conditions are right. Every morning in Rancho Palos Verdes, the ground beneath people's feet is somewhere new. Fences that once ran straight now zigzag across yards, pushed out of line by earth that won't stand still. Residents wake to find gates jammed shut, retaining walls buckled, and driveways split by fresh cracks. Utility crews work around the clock, repairing water mains and gas lines that shear apart as the hillside lurches forward. Power outages come without warning, not from storms, but from the slow, relentless movement of the land itself. For those who live here, the signs of change are everywhere. Mailboxes lean at odd angles. Steps to front doors sink or rise by inches in a single week. Some families keep a ruler by the window to measure how far the wall has shifted since last month. In 2024, satellite radar and ground sensors recorded the hillside, advancing as much as 16 inches in a single month, a pace that leaves even longtime residents unsettled. The psychological toll is hard to measure, 
Some neighbors swap stories about sleepless nights, listening for the faint groan of shifting foundations. Others have learned to laugh about the daily surprises, finding a fence post pushed two feet into a neighbor's yard overnight, or a garden path that now climbs like a ski slope. But beneath the humor, anxiety runs deep. Insurance is nearly impossible to find. Property values tumble. The question of when, not if, a home will need to be abandoned hangs over every conversation. Living on this moving mountain means adapting to uncertainty. The ground is always in motion, and so are the lives built upon it. Every new crack, every failed pipe, is a reminder that nature, not city plans or engineering, sets the rules here. The numbers behind the rising seafloor are as clear as the cracks zigzagging through Rancho Palos Verdes. When geologists measure the movement, they use a straightforward formula. The amount of vertical uplift, U sub V, is equal to the horizontal slip, U sub H, multiplied by the tangent of the ramp's angle. Written as U sub V is approximately U sub H times tan alpha. This isn't just an equation on paper. It governs every inch the land shifts. If the ramp beneath the slide tilts at 6 degrees, each meter of horizontal movement lifts the seafloor by about 10 centimeters. When the angle steepens to 12 or even 22 degrees, the same amount of slip can double or triple the vertical rise. Field surveys and satellite data confirm these calculations. During heavy rains, the ramp's geometry dictates exactly how much the ocean floor will bulge upward for every surge of the hillside. In some parts of the slide, where the ramp thickens or bends, uplift rates spike, matching model predictions almost perfectly. Laboratory experiments back this up. In controlled settings, blocks of earth on inclined planes move and lift in proportions set by the ramp's angle, just as the formula predicts. The sensitivity to ramp angle means even a small change in underground geometry can have dramatic effects at the surface. Engineers and city planners now monitor these numbers obsessively, knowing that the next spike in rainfall could translate into measurable new land offshore. The mechanics are simple, but the consequences are anything but. The uplift isn't random. It's a predictable response to the relentless geometry of the Earth a process that plays out with every slip and every storm. City budgets tell a story that science alone cannot. Since the first signs of acceleration, Rancho Palos Verdes has poured nearly $48 million into the fight against the landslide. Year after year, council meetings have authorized new rounds of emergency spending, retaining walls, slope monitoring, utility repairs, and road rerouting. Every time the ground shifted, another contract was signed, another engineering firm brought in, another round of repairs begun. But the land kept moving, undeterred by money or manpower. The city manager, pressed by reporters and residents alike, has described the effort as a race against nature with no clear finish line. In council minutes from 2023 and 2024, officials debated how long they could keep patching roads and pipes before the budget simply gave out. The costs have not just drained city coffers, they've forced hard choices about what can be saved and what must be surrendered. Utility crews have replaced the same water main three times in a single year. Retaining walls built for millions have lasted months before splitting apart. Each new failure comes with a price tag, and the totals keep climbing. By early 2024, the financial reality had become impossible to ignore. Federal disaster aid and state emergency funds arrived, but even these could not keep pace with the mounting bills. In March, a $42 million property buyout program was announced offering at-risk homeowners the chance to leave before the ground claimed their houses for good. The fund, backed by federal and local dollars, promised market value offers, but came with a catch. Once bought, the land could never be redeveloped. For many, it was the only option left. The city's spending is now tracked in public records and council packets, every dollar debated in open session. But the gap between the scale of the disaster and the resources available grows wider each month.
Engineers and planners have stopped talking about solutions and started talking about survival, about how to retreat safely, how to compensate those who lose everything, and how to prepare for what comes next. The numbers are staggering, but the limits of human control are even clearer. No matter how much is spent, the ground keeps moving and the sea keeps rising. A new layer of danger came into focus in 2024 when satellite interferometry and deep drilling revealed the landslide's true scale. INSAR analysts tracking ground movement from orbit noticed anomalies that didn't match the known shallow slip plane. Instead of a single sliding surface, the data showed entire neighborhoods shifting in patterns too broad and too fast to explain with the upper ramp alone. The ground wasn't just creeping, it was accelerating, and the movement reached farther inland and deeper underground than anyone expected. To find the source, drilling crews bored through hundreds of feet of unstable earth. Beneath the familiar bentonite layer, the drill bit punched into a second, deeper slip plane, hidden for millennia at depths between 245 and 345 feet. The core samples told a story of sheared shale and pressurized groundwater, a buried fault line lubricated by water forced down from above. In some spots, the deep plane was moving up to 13 inches a week, doubling the pace of the overlying slide. The deeper the drill went, the more evidence piled up. High pore pressures, fractured rock, and a bowl-shaped geometry that extended well beyond the boundaries of the original slide. The drilling engineer reviewing the borehole logs described the system as a bowl within a bowl, a stacked landslide complex with each layer capable of independent movement. The deeper plane's reach dwarfed the shallow slide, threatening not just homes and roads, but the very stability of the peninsula. INSAR maps lit up with hot spots, showing ground displacement over 700 acres, nearly twice what had been monitored before. Every rainfall sent pulses of water down to the deep slip zone, recharging the pressure and triggering new surges. The realization hit hard. The landslide was not a single problem, but a multi-layered machine, powered by forces far beyond the reach of surface repairs. The deeper plane had awakened, and with movement rates this high, traditional mitigation was no longer enough. The ground itself had become an unstoppable force, its full power only now coming into view. In 1956, a single road project triggered the reactivation of a landslide that had been dormant for 5,000 years, destroying over 130 homes in Rancho Palos Verdes. Scientific investigations revealed a hidden layer of bentonite clay with a friction angle of just 6 degrees, turning solid ground into a slow-moving slip zone. By 2024, parts of the hillside were sliding at a rate of 4.5 feet per month, while deep drilling confirmed a second slip plane moving nearly 13 inches per week at depths of up to 345 feet. Despite $48 million spent on mitigation and a $42 million federal buyout fund, no engineering solution has stopped the movement. The exact long-term behavior of the deeper slip plane remains uncertain, as does the ultimate impact on California's coastline. What is clear from decades of records and satellite data is that human actions, natural forces, and hidden geology combine to reshape land and sea. The story of the rising seafloor is not just a scientific mystery, it's a documented reminder that California's coast remains in constant, unstoppable motion.